Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and I am doing some prep for keto for meals for the next several weeks. I'm going to be super busy at work as well as a trip coming up. So I'm going to make some stuff for my freezer. Some will be cooked, some will not be cooked. Like I'll cook it when I need it. Right now I'm making uh, chicken tenders. So I got a family pack of tenders. I guess I should probably take my jewelry off. What do you think? And then I made yesterday seven bags. This is of pork rinds ground up in my food processor. So they're like breadcrumbs. And I added Parmesan cheese. So that's this breading. And this is just eggs that I whipped up. And I threw a little garlic powder. I get this at Aldi. A little garlic powder and a tiny bit of salt, but nothing major. And I am going to double dip them. So I thought I would bring you along for a minute and just show you what I'm doing. And with these, what I do is I throw them in the freezer, uncooked. And then when I'm ready to cook them, I just throw them in my air fryer. And they're perfectly delicious right from frozen they get crispy on the outside and the inside gets um nice and juicy uh yeah it works out well so i just put them in egg i let some you know most of the egg kind of come off dip it in the crumb mixture try not to get too goopy in the crumb mixture and i try to keep my hands separated <laughs> If you don't like a lot of batter, one dip is perfectly fine. I like mine extra crunchy. So I just do the double dip, but you don't have to. And I'll show you the double dip here. So while I'm doing that, I can tell you, I have a lot of work at the Schottenstein Center and there's university where I work. So if you don't know, I do have a part-time job and it, it is at Ohio State University. So they have, I work for the Department of Athletics. I work as an usher at, I mean, guest services, I suppose, is technically what I do at the Schottenstein Center. And then I do a myriad of jobs, but they help the guests. I mean, that's the basis of what we do. Um, sometimes, oops, I'm helping people find their seat. Sometimes I am helping with ticket issues. It doesn't really I mean, they just put us where they need us, really. And then at football, I do what's called guest safety. Hence, if you ever see my pictures on social media, I'm wearing an orange vest, a safety vest. So my team, I'm the supervisor, so I have a team of 15. And what we do is we go around the stadium and we help out the other ushers that are in charge of, you know, making sure the guests are get to their seats and if they are lost or if there's any issue. Did I mention this is a messy job? And that's why I do it like a family size because it gets messy. Um, oh, so, and if, you know, we see people smoking, we ask them to stop. We give a lot of directions. If first aid is needed, we help call first aid. You know, we just keep sh make sure the guests are safe and enjoy the game without, you know, upsetting each other. Um, you know, when we play a game that is very controversial, or that's not really the word, high, like Michigan. Michigan is a big rivalry. That, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. They're a big rivalry of ours. And those games, there's a lot of emotions flying high. So, try to keep our eye on that. Also, we just had our biggest game the other day the largest crowd since 2014 and that was against Notre Dame they came to the Ohio Stadium and I worked that game so that was a rough game and not rough in the sense that anybody it was terribly bad fan wise but rough because we broke all kinds of records of the amount of people in the stadium and there was a lot of seating issues just you know typical stuff so I deal with that so there's that coming up I have a couple events because I also work concerts at the Schottenstein Center and different events that are not just sports so 
football plays at the shoe. I work there eight games this season. And then at the stadium, at the arena, Schottenstein Center Arena, they play men's basketball plays there, women's basketball plays there, and men's hockey plays there. So we staff those events. So the seasons are getting ready to ramp up. And I have a trip. Actually, I have a couple trips coming up. I booked to uh, Canada next year, two different trips. So that's going to require hotel and I'll drive to those events. And then next month in October, the middle of the month, I will be in London, England. And so that's going to cost a lot. And so I said, girl, you need to get your hours in. Plus, we're required to work a certain amount of hours at the stadium. Um, it's not a want to sometimes. We're required to keep our job there to work a certain amount of events. It's no big deal. We just have to do it. Sorry, I'm washing my hands so I can get some more crumbs. But that is basically all I do. That is how I make my um, chicken tenders. And I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, four, fourteen. Fourteen of them. So I have fourteen tenders. I'm getting ready to double dip them. So that, um, and I'll just keep this breading if I have any left, which I should. But we'll see. The double dip usually gets a lot more coating on them. And we'll do one more scoop. I don't want to put my gross hands all over this bag because if I don't use it all, you know, you don't want to keep it. So here's how we double dip. I literally just double dip it. I put it back in the egg wash. Now, if I had patience, I would be doing like um, Chick-fil-A. They marinate their chicken tenders in um, pickle juice, which is really cool. But um, I didn't have time for all that today. And it does make them delicious. Also, you could do uh, buttermilk. You could do any kind of marinade that you would like on the chicken tenders. I honestly just find that this is delicious. So then what I will do, once I've breaded all of these a second time, I put this whole pan in the freezer and they don't touch each other. So what will happen is they will freeze solid in one, you know, free solid. Then I just throw them in a big zip bag and put them in my freezer over here in the kitchen. And when I need a dinner, or let's say I'm working, I think Thursday night I'm working. So what I would do at lunchtime Thursday is cook a chicken tender and maybe make a sandwich wrap or just take it by itself and some kind of vegetable. And that's my dinner at the Schottenstein Center. They do supply us with discounts and meal vouchers, but if there's nothing there I can eat. So I just make sure I bring my own food. And everybody is used to me doing this, so it's nothing, no big deal to them. I usually just eat it cold. It doesn't, I'm not a fussy eater, but look how much breading gets on that. I just eat what I need to eat so that I'm not hungry. And that I've had a nutritious dinner. Is pretty much how I roll for that and then I just have to make sure these are freezing but not touching and these are still very cold so I'm wondering if they were pre-frozen I don't know I use the same brand all the time so I'm going to assume we're okay and then I will show you when these are done but then the next thing I'm gonna make requires some cooking and I haven't shown you guys the fathead dough in a while but I'm going to make some bagel dogs. I mean, they're keto, not really bagel dogs, but a keto version, right? I will tell you when you're doing this, if you can have some patience and let as much of the egg dump off as you can, it definitely makes the whole process a little easier. They stick a little better. Also, um, it, you don't use as many eggs. And you don't need all of the egg batter. 
Also, it keeps your crumbs a little drier. I may need one more scoop since I have a couple more eggs here or a couple more tenders, but we'll see. Try to make it go. So I would have spent on this keto meal, uh, let's see, the chicken tenders were $11 and like 50 cents. So 11, 50, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, about $20. For 14 chicken tenders when you throw the eggs in there and the pork rind dust because the pork rind bags are about a dollar 20 a piece and like I said I ground up seven bags oh and Parmesan cheese did I tell you that I don't know I don't remember I may have told you but I put Parmesan cheese in here um, it just helps crisp it up a little bit, but it also just tastes wonderful. All right, let's see if I can make this one stretch. I think I can. Yeah, may not be pretty, but it's done. So there is my whole tray of frozen chicken tenders, and I will be back. Okay, we're making something called fat head dough. It used to it used to be super popular in the keto world. A few years ago. I love it, so I still make it. Um, it was a pizza dough. It still is a pizza dough, I guess I should say, but I use it for lots of different things. Um, so what the recipe that I'm using is a cup and a half of mozzarella cheese, three quarters of a cup of um, almond flour, two tablespoons-ish I don't get crazy with this. Two tablespoons of cream cheese. And then an egg. And I don't know how many batches of this I'm going to make, but we're going to do one right now. I'm not sure it does well when you double it, to be frank. So what I'm going to do, I just mix it all together and put it in the microwave for 30 seconds at a time until it all melts and I can stir it together with a wooden spoon. And then I, I'm i molding mine in this, but I'll show you what I'm gonna do. This is um, a marble, piece of marble, like a tile. And a lot of bakers use it for pastry. It does really good rolling out this fat head dough. You don't have to have any of this. You can just roll it out and put pizza on top of it. You bake it first. But I'm making hot dogs. So I need to get this going in the microwave, 30 seconds at a time, stir it in between. And then once it becomes dough, like once it's come together, I put in one egg. And I'm gonna put this egg in warm water so it comes to room temperature because I did not set them out before I went. So that's just sitting in some hot water just to bring it up to temperature. So let me put this in the microwave and I'll show you what it looks like before I add the egg. Okay, so this is what it looks like right now. I'll show you, give me a second. So it's like a dough, um, but you need to add your egg. What's gonna happen is the egg is going to bind this all together. Um, I brought my egg to room temperature so that it will not um, cool off this cheese. It's warm, so you wanna be careful. But, and it looks like it won't combine, but it will. You just gotta give it some time. So the, the key here is to keep everything kind of warm until you're ready to roll it out. Because if it does get too cold on you, um, you can put it back in the microwave, but once you've added your egg to it, you may cook your egg a different way than you want to. Right now we're trying to combine the egg. We're not trying to cook it separate like a scrambled egg. That's what we do not want is scrambled eggs. So I'm just using my hand. People, there's a million different techniques out there. There's lots of videos if you're not a hand kind of cooker. So it's coming together. Now I'm gonna let it cool for a few. As soon as it's all combined, I want it like dough consistency, like a pizza, I hear you dub, like a pizza dough. And then you kind of let it cool for a minute when it's sticking together. So right now it's a little sticky and that is totally okay. I'm gonna let it cool off for a second. Just kind of keep messing with it. 
because I need it to roll out um, into a dough. Well, I'm not getting this to roll out very well. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it and I'm filling it in the bottom. And I don't know what was wrong with my recipe and it could have been too much cream cheese. I'm not sure. I haven't made this in a while, but irrelevant. I'm just filling up. Yeah, let me see if I can get you this way. Well, I can't. Hold on. I will show you. But I'm just filling up the hot dog molds. Because this is for this is a silicone bun pan. And this is about how you do my how I do keto. I'm just gonna tell you, if I if something doesn't work out, like there must be too much cream cheese in here, not enough almond flour, it's hard to tell. Maybe it's not cool enough, maybe the egg was too big. I don't know. But anyway, what we're gonna do, I'm just filling the bottoms first of these pans, right? Okay. Let's see if I can get you looking down a little better. There we go. And then I'm gonna take a hot dog and smush it in the middle. Right, that's what we wanna do. I did cut them so they will fit in here at a better size. And I'm just squishing them down in here. So see how the, it doesn't really matter. The dough is going to cook, even though it's a little soft right this second. I'm going to fill it in all over the top if I can, if I have enough. If I don't, that's okay too. I'll leave the tops open and they'll just be hot dogs. But I'll be right back once I get them all mushed on top. Okay, guys. I remember now, this is not roll dough, this is padded with wet hands dough. So this is what my bagel bites look like. There's hot dog in the middle. I'm gonna bake those. I did make a second batch um, because I wanted some pizza dough and I did use less cream cheese so it isn't quite as sticky. But you wet your fingers with water and then you pat this dough out. So I'm gonna make a pizza crust for my freezer or I'll make it tonight to eat, I don't know. But when you make when you make that head dough, right, you bake the crust first. It's just like a chicken crust dough. You bake it first and all this water on my hands will, that I'm getting on here, it'll evaporate in the oven. I don't know how thin you would like your pizza crust and depending on how thin you like it, that's how much you pat it out. You must, this is not even up for a discussion. If you're gonna make keto stuff like this, you have to have to have to have parchment paper, not waxed paper and not aluminum foil. I will 100% guarantee you that this will stick to anything. Foil, or you can use silicone, I, I should say that. I cook in silicone a lot, but the cheese and the crust will stick to this terribly. You'll never get it off. You will have wasted all this effort and time. So I think that's a good size pizza crust for me. And then what I will do, because um, I like garlic, is I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of garlic just on my crust, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna bake this on a sheet. Time is really depending on your thickness. So I'm sliding it onto a baking sheet. You can do it right on the baking sheet as well. I'm gonna bake this until it is brown and done. And I will show you what both of these look like when they come out of the oven. Mm, 350. All right, the bagel dogs are complete. So they baked up and on the inside is a hot dog. I did put a little um, bagel seasoning on top. I'm gonna put them on this pan over here and then I probably will put a little melted butter on them. Let them cool completely. And then I will put them in the freezer to allow, oh, actually, yeah. I'll put them in the freezer 
to allow them to freeze individually, just like the chicken tenders. And then since these are fully cooked, I'll just throw them in my lunch frozen and then take them and then heat them up if I so choose to heat them when I get them to lunch. Maybe I won't put butter on them. I don't know. I think that'll taste very bagel-like, like Auntie Annie's bagels. Ha ha, yes. All right, now the next thing I did, here, I'll just slide it over on its parchment. Yeah, we'll put it on a cool pan. So the pizza crust, you bake it on the parchment paper, right? It's cool to the touch, it's out, but it's stuck. So what you need to do is flip it over once it's cooled completely and cooked completely, and you're just peeling it. You see what I'm saying? Like, if you tried to put this on foil or on something, I don't even know if it would stick to silicone, to be honest with you. I always just put it on parchment paper. And that is the pizza crust. Now it's in one piece. If I want, I can put sauce and cheese and pepperoni on it and bake it again just to cook the toppings because this has been cooked. I'm not sure yet. I may end up doing that for dinner tonight just because it's done and it's easy. But for right now, I have another um, dish I wanna make for this week. And that is some egg salad. So I'm letting these pans cool before I go stick them in the freezer. So what I will do is I'm gonna peel these eggs and put them in a bowl and then I'll show you how I make my egg salad. Okay, I got the hard boiled eggs all chopped up and that is a pickle. I like a dill or like a deviled style egg salad. I know everybody does it differently. And then I put some dill weed in it just a seasoning. It just kind of gives it a little something, something. I like a lot. I gotta buy some more. And I think today I'm gonna put a little taste of garlic in it. Just a touch, not being a, too much. Now, also, I like my egg salad a little dry. I, don't, I guess I don't like a lot of mayonnaise in it. So I put about, I don't know, a teaspoon of mustard and I'll start with that in a scoop of mayonnaise. I know I'm gonna need more than that, but I hate adding too much, right? Right, because if it's too wet, I just don't like it. I don't like it soupy. All right, so I know I'm gonna need a little more mustard, one more teaspoon, or is that a tablespoon? It's probably a tablespoon. And another little scoop. I like, that's too much. I like Duke's mayonnaise. That is what I like. Stir it up and then I'm gonna taste it. And if I want it a little looser, sometimes I'll just add a little pickle juice, but I think that's perfect for me. So it's pretty dry, but like I said, that's how I like it. I didn't put any salt and pepper in it yet. Mmm, perfect. It does need a tidge more tang. So just a little more mustard. I could add a little pickle juice to it, but I won't. A little more dill. I'm gonna do a pinch of salt. And that should be enough salt. And a few cranks of pepper. right because I do like pepper and then I'll just use that spoon since I haven't already had that in my mouth although I'm the only one eating it so it doesn't really matter now the dill will come alive when it wakes up when it's like tomorrow this will be so much better because all the pickles in there will let off a little bit of juice mm-hmm mm -hmm, mm -hmm. perfect and that's it. That's how I make egg salad. So easy. And since it's Halloween's giving this, we're gonna pull out the old black cat Pyrex. 
I don't know who I'm kidding. I use it year round. And this will be in the fridge for me to have probably for lunches when I'm working at home. Uh, I may pack it for when I go to work as well for this week, but this will be like lunch food for me. The stuff that I have in the freezer currently is more like dinner food. And that's it. I mean, I've just prepped food enough for me to have that's all keto friendly for the next two to three weeks in my freezer and fridge. Obviously the egg salad will be just for this week. I'll probably make the pizza tonight, but I'll have chicken tenders and bagel dogs. I have cut up cheese. I have some vegetables in my fridge and I'll get a piece of meat and cut it up. Some type of like turkey or something just to have some lunch meat. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed coming along with me while I prep for a busy couple weeks of keto food. And this is how I stay on track by always having the things I can have. All right, guys, talk to you later. Bye.